I've got one more example to do for you. This time, an example with a diverging lens. This is a diverging lens with a focal length of 24 centimeters. Conventionally, remember, we use a negative 24 to represent the fact that it's a diverging lens. The negative sign there is what represents that diverging part. So measure is 24 centimeters. I, as usual, I've drawn the central axis of the lens in my diagram here. I've drawn a straight vertical line representing the center line of the lens because remember we're assuming all of our approximations here are assuming an infinitely thin lens but just to remind myself of the type of lens it is I have then drawn a sort of cartoonish version of a diverging lens a concave lens in the middle showing how showing that it is a diverging lens but when I do my ray tracing as usual I'm only going to pay attention to that central line because it's all that matters really for this approximation uh, the other thing I've drawn in are 24 centimeters away on each side. I've drawn the two focal points for this lens uh, along this line. And I've put an object here 40 centimeters from the lens. Object 40 centimeters away, 20 centimeters tall. And I want to use ray tracing to find the location of the image corresponding to this object. In other words, as usual, I'm imagining that we're going to be looking from this side and we want to know where that image winds up going. Just like with our other lenses, just like with converging lenses, we use the same three principal rays. The only difference now is that we need to pay attention to the fact this is a diverging lens instead of a converging lens. So let's do that. Let's look at this. Uh, same three rays, which means that principal ray number one is the same as it always is. It's a ray that starts out going parallel to the axis of the lens. So I'm going to draw that as best I can here. I'm going to line this up, trying to be parallel to the axis. Let's see if I've got the position well. Okay, how am I doing? That's not bad anyway. Pretty close. So I'm going to draw across here. Principal ray number one for any type of lens always starts out the same. It's parallel to the axis until it hits the thin lens. As soon as it reaches that midpoint of the lens, that center of the thin lens, for principal ray number one, well, if this were a converging lens, it would converge together and go through that other focal point, because that's the definition of a converging lens. This is a diverging lens, and diverging lenses have exactly the opposite behavior. Instead of focusing light parallel rays down to a point, diverging lenses spread out parallel rays as if they came from a point. So what we need to do is line up here, line up on the other side the whole point of a diverging lens, is that it looks as if the ray came from this focal point. That's the entire idea of diverging lens, is it looks as if the ray came from here once it goes out the other side. So for principal ray number one, same story as before, parallel to the axis, but now for diverging lens, it goes away as if it had come from the focal point. Okay, enough of that. That's ray one, principal ray one. Principal ray two, always the easy one. Principal ray number two starts at our, at our object point, whatever object point we care about. It starts there, and I need a longer ruler, don't I? Starts at the point we care about. Ah, long ruler indeed. Start, it'll start up here, and I'll be able to trace it down. Oh, try to keep that in place. Principal ray number two is always the easiest one. Comes out the other side and goes on forever down that way. That's principal ray number two. May as well label it. Principal ray two. Principal ray number three is always the tricky one. Every time, principal ray number three is the tricky one. But remember, what principal ray number three is, it always looks exactly like ray one run backward. So what we're looking for is a ray that is parallel to the axis on this side and that is going some other angle on that side. Now think about a diverging lens. Any ray that is parallel to the axis on this side is going to come out the other side as if it was going through, it's going to come out that side as if it was coming from, rather, this focal point. 
That's the whole idea of diverging lenses. So to run that backward, we want a ray that on this side looks like this, and on the other side looks like it lines up as if it came from there. The rule for Brits ray number three is always you use the other focal point, the one you haven't already used, and you try to go there. Well, in this case, that means I, have a, I want a ray, ray number three, is going to try to look like it passes through that far, fo oof, that far focal point. Let me get this lined up. So you see what this looks like. Principal ray number three is going to come down like so. Get that right. Get that right. Okay. Come down like so, as if it's going that way. So again, Principle number th principle ray number three is always aimed as if it was going through the other focal point, the one you haven't used yet for principle ray one. But when it reaches the lens, instead of keeping going, principle ray three is all, all comes out the other side, parallel to the axis. And I'll do my best to be parallel to the axis here. There's principal ray three. And again, looking at ray three, you can see how it looks like ray one backward. It was parallel to the axis on that side, and then diverged as if going away from that far focal point. Our thin lens approximation is coming to our rescue again. All right, so those are our three principal rays, and now we have to ask, if we're looking from this side, what do we see? What do we perceive? Because we certainly don't see the object. The object is blocked by the lens. What we perceive has to be what it looks like these three rays go back to do. Well, ray one, conveniently, I already drew a dotted line here because it looks because I was already worried about where it looked like it came from. So that's already drawn. Ray two, conveniently, didn't bend at all. So it, where, it pass, where it passes, that's actually where it looks like ray two came from. So all I need to extend on is ray three. Where does it look like ray three came from? And let me just follow that back with a dotted line again. I always like to use dotted lines for this. Ray 3, running it backward, running it backward. I'm a little high. Ray 3. Get that right on that side, OK. There's Ray 3, where it looks like Ray 3 came from. And hey, look at that. I did really well this time. My three rays, by some miracle, all actually seem to have come from one point. My drawing was really good this time. Uh, they, pat they came through really close to the same point there. I can draw. Now, what that means is that will look like the tip of my object, and so, or the tip of my image, rather. And so, that's my image point. My image point is right there. I guess I could measure this distance that distance s prime measuring from here over to there. I have a ruler here measuring across. I get an s prime in my picture. Uh, I'm going to call it almost exactly 20, oh no, 15, sorry. Almost exactly 15 centimeters. I mean, within millimeters of that. My lines came together so well, I'm uh, very small. 15 centimeters, if I wanted uncertainty, plus or minus. 0. I don't know. I'll call it 0. 0.5 centimeters. Uh, this one came out really nicely. I keep underestimating my uncertainties in these, but this one, that's really small. And my height, just to check, my height of this image measuring from the central line, I'm getting almost exactly 8 centimeters. So my h prime equals 8 centimeters. That's my image height. And again, you can see how this worked. How how the uh, you can see how this how this ray tracing worked. Ray one is the same as it's always been, except it diverges instead of converging. Ray two is the same as it's always been, really easy. And ray three, again, it's principal ray run backward. Principal ray one run backward. You go toward the other focal point up until you hit the lens, and then you go straight out parallel to the axis. Those are my three rays. They came together great here.
let's go ahead and check this once again using the thin lens equation just to see how it comes out. As usual, we know the thin lens equation says 1 over f equals 1 over s plus 1 over s prime. So I can say then that 1 over s prime equals 1 over f is 1 over minus 24 centimeters minus 1 over s, 1 over 40 centimeters. Those are both negative. Uh, 24 and 40, what's a common denominator for those? 60 looks like it's going to work, doesn't it? Um, I think 60. Well, no, 60 doesn't work for this one. 120, got to go up to 120. Okay, so this one is 24, that is minus 5 over 120 centimeters, minus 3 over 120 centimeters. Adding those up, I get minus 8 over 120 centimeters, and I think those divide evenly. Let's see. 8 over 120 is 4 over 60, is 2 over 30, is 1 over 15. That's minus 1 over 15 centimeters. So S prime equals minus 15 centimeters. I'm good. All right, so 15 centimeters matches my drawing very nicely. The minus sign, as usual, means that this is a virtual image. The minus sign means there's a virtual image behind the lens. And again, that's exactly what we expect. You'll essentially always get virtual images with diverging lenses because it takes really unusual circumstances to have a real image show up on the other side. Uh, in, or in familiar things that we do in introductory physics classes, it's that you basically never come up with that. So uh, what's, what do we have? That means, if, if, when I say it's a virtual image, remember, that means that the, the rays, possibly with one exception, didn't really all pass through that point. They, and in this case, you can see, well, ray two actually really did pass through that point, but it's the only one. None of the other rays actually passed through that point. And so, we have minus 15 centimeters, we've got the minus, let's check the height as well just to see how that pans out. We know h prime over h equals minus s prime over s, which is minus negative 15 centimeters over my s, my object distance was 40 centimeters, which means that's positive, negative and negative is a positive, 15 over 40, let's divide by 5, that's plus 3 eighths. So our image should be 3 eighths as of the height of the, as the object was. Uh, let's see, that means h prime equals 3 eighths times 20 centimeters. Uh, 20 over 8 is 2 and a half, 7.5 centimeters. How would I do? Hey, 8 centimeters. Uh, cleverly, I didn't write an uncertainty there. Clearly, it was plus or minus half a centimeter. Uh, yeah, so uh, it, you know, again, I never expect my ray tracing to come out perfectly. Uh, it, it essentially never does unless you're using a drafting program or computer or something. But I've come out basically right. My, my drawing here came out an awfully good match to the S prime and the H prime. Again, it's a positive number, positive 7.5 because the negative and the negative canceled. That tells me my image is supposed to be upright, which is what my picture told me as well. So the ray tracing has matched up with the equations as usual. I really like having both ways of doing this. The equations, of course, will give me the best numerical results. These are the numerical results that I trust mathematically. But I get such good intuition for what's going on from the picture that even if I'm just doing the equations, usually for me, I always just sketch out one of these anyway because it gives me such a good picture of what's going on. Fun fact, by the way. The fact this is a, you know, we already understand what it means to have a negative S prime, a negative image distance. It means it's on the wrong side of the lens. It means it's on the incoming side instead of the outgoing side. So we know what a negative image distance means. The negative focal point, you can think of in the same way. You can say, oh, with a converging lens, principal ray number one cared about the focal point that was on the outgoing side. Well. The important focal point for principal ray number one is now on the wrong side of the lens. So just like the image was on the wrong side, the focal point, the main focal point is on the wrong side too. Wrong side. 
the negative side. And that's how I sort of think of that negative side. Uh, interesting fact, by the way, in case you uh, run into it, there's nothing, there would be no special difference if I moved this object across that focal point there. There's, there would be no change from real to virtual image or any of that if I moved this object across this focal point, unlike the converging lens where there's a big change from real, op real images to virtual images when I cross that focal point. For a diverging lens, there's no difference. Uh, secretly, the only difference for a diverging lens is if you move it past that focal point. What does it mean to have an object on the wrong side of the lens? A virtual object? Well, that's a different question, and it doesn't come up, come up in our class, so I'm going to dodge it for now. Uh, but you would put a negative sign in for S if it happened to come up. All right, with that, we've done a diverging lens example. We've covered basically everything that our class is going to do for tests like this.